welcome back to my Twitter Asa. So we have to prove whether or not f of x equals x cubed is an injective function and then find the inverse function of f of x equals x cubed plus 2. So now, injective function means we have injective function. Injective function means 1 to 1 function. So another name. Subjective function, it means what? Onto function. Onto function. Then we have bijective function. When you talk of bijective function, we are dealing with what? Both injective and subjective. So, injective function, we mean what? One to one function. Subjective function we mean what on to function then by injective function we are dealing with what both injective function and subjective function this means one to one function and on to function all right so injective function let's deal with our injective function which means what one to one function so one to one function is a type of function in which each element in the domain corresponds to what? Only one image or one possible image in the what? Co-domain. In the co-domain. So if you have the domain, then I have my co-domain known as the Y. So I have the elements here. So we have this. We have that. So it means that A must what? Only one element in what? In the code domain. So this A must be this D. D must be what? E. C must be what? F. So this one is the domain. This one is the code domain. That's the possible images of the what? Of the domain. So now, injective function. So how can we show that this F of X equals X cubed is an injective function? So first of all, So first of all, we have to write if f of x is an injective is an injective function, then f of let's say f of a must be equal to what f of b, which implies that. A might be equal to what? B. Where A and B are members or are elements of the real number system. So if f of x is an injective function, then you have to think that f of A equals what? f of B implies that A must be equal to what? Where A and B are elements of these real numbers. So now I've used a different element, which is A and B. So in place of S, I can substitute in what A. Then in place of B, I can substitute. In place of S, I can also substitute in what B. So I have F of X equals S cubed. So now we are saying that F of A must be equal to what? F of B. So now, in place of X, we substitute. So we get A cubed must be equal to what? B cubed. So 
noun here h u t equals v t t how can you solve this guy here what do you do you have to take what the cube root of both sides you have to take the cube root of both sides so we will take cube root of both sides so you have to take the cube root of both sides so if you take the cube root of both sides you get cube root of a cubed must be equal to cube root of b cubed so now this guy cancels that then this guy too cancels that so you can get what a must be equal to b so it means that this guy satisfies what the condition so now then how do we conclude hence or you can see that since you can see that since a equals b then f of x equals x cubed is indeed an injective an injective bracket one to one function so you have to conclude for the exam naturally so since a equals b then f of x equals x cubed is indeed an injective divided of one to one root function so that's how you have to do that so we are coming to solve for any one to one function or an injective function that with this if f of x is an injective function then f of a must be equal to what f of b which implies that what a must be equal to what b where a and b are members of the real numbers so now let's move on to question two question two all right question two a it says here find the domain x intercept and y intercept of f of x equals 4 minus 3x over 2x plus 5. So now, now how can we find for the domain? The domain, we have to find for the domain first. So the domain of f of x. So f of x equals 4 minus 3. So what is the mean? So the domain are what the possible values of x that will make this function defined. All these they are the possible values of x that will make this function defined. So that means we exclude the values of x that will make this function what undefined. We exclude the values of x that will make this function what undefined. But we include values of the x that will make this function what defined. So now we have a fractional expression here. Right. So we get 4 minus 3x over 2x plus 5 or we get a fractional equation. So now how best can we find for the domain? Whenever you see a fraction and they ask you to find the domain, always concentrate on the denominator always concentrate on the denominator. So always, you say that if the denominator is zero, then this function does not exist. Or this fraction or this value does not what exist. If the denominator is equal to what zero, which means that zero times what gives us one. Zero times what will give you one. If you can answer this Zero times what will give you one. There is no number. Zero times what? Is it zero times one will give us one? No, zero times one is zero. So what number will you multiply by what? Zero to get one. There is no number. So then that means this value does not yet exist. That means there is no number. So now you have to say that 2x plus 5 should not be equal to what? Zero. So now if 
x plus 5 is equal to 7, then we have to find for the union. Then how can you solve this linear equation? Simple equation, cos 5 cos 6. So I get 2x equals 0 minus 5 into x equals 25. Then what should I do? I divide each side by the coefficient. So which means that the domain must be equal to x is such that x is the member of all the real numbers where x should not be equal to negative 5 over 2. So x should not be equal to negative 5 over 2. So this is the domain. Substitute in negative 5 over 2, this function will not exist. Alright, thank you very much. Let's move on to the x intercept. So, the x intercept. Now, x intercept refers to where this function cuts the, the x axis. So, where this function cuts the x axis is referred to as what? The x intercept. So if I have this, then I get a function. I get a function, so let's say a function like this. So, so a function f of x, so it cuts this x axis. Then that means the value of y is what? Is zero. The value of y is zero. So when we stick to it, when you when you tell me to find for the x intercept, then that means the value of y must be equal to what? Zero. Or the y coordinate is always what? Zero. Where the line cuts the x axis. So the y coordinate is always equal to what? Zero. So now I have my f of x equals 4 minus 3x divided by 2x plus 5. So now we all know that our f of Now I can see that then this equals what? Zero. So now I can substitute zero equals four minus three x divided by two x plus five. So now what can we do? This one is over one. We can do what? Cross multiplication here or cross product. So this guy multiplies that, so I still get the same thing as four minus three x. Because one times the whole of that, we get that. Then zero times the whole of that. We get zero. So now if you like this, so I get four equals negative three x. Sorry, positive three x. This one crosses, so I get zero plus three x. So I get positive three x. Then now what do you do? You have to divide each side by the coefficient of x, which is what three. So now here I get my x which must be equal to 4 on 3. So this guy has this guy. Now, the x-intercept, we want what? The point, not this one. The x-intercept is not this. x-intercept is always a point. So now, since y is equal to 0, we want to do the x-intercept. So therefore, so therefore, our x-intercept is what? 4 over 3, comma, 0. 4 over 3, comma, 0. So the x intercept is this point, not that. Or we stick it on that. So when you reach here and you conclude that this is the x intercept, I can do the count. 2 over 4. Sure. Alright, let's move on to the y intercept. y intercept. Now, y intercept refers to where the line cuts the y axis. Where the line cuts the y axis. So, if I have this one to be my line, that's my function, f of x, that's an increasing function. So, this increasing function cuts the y axis. Then that means my x coordinate is always what? Zero. So, I get zero. 
into this is a point for the y intercept where the line or where the function cuts the y axis. So you get that means my x must be equal to zero. So I have f of x is equal to four minus three x all over two x plus five. So my x equals zero then it means that my f of zero wherever I see x I substitute zero equals four minus three times zero all on three times zero plus five so my f of zero equals four minus three times zero you get zero two times zero you get zero plus five so f of zero equals four minus zero so divided by is the same thing as y. That's f of x is the same thing as y. So I can conclude that my y is four out of five. So now this is not the y intercept. Now therefore my y intercept is since x is zero I have zero four out of five. So this is the y Intercept. Intercept. All right, let's move on to question two B. Let's go to B. All right, so let's proceed to this question. Solve the equation e to the power two x minus two e to the power x plus one equals zero. So now let's see how best we can solve this equation. So I have e to the power 2x minus 2e to the power x plus 1 equals 0. So now, you all know that a to the power n times b, you all know that this n multiplies with b, so I can get a to the power n. So I get it e to the power bm. So we have this as that. The same thing we have e to the power n, then b to the power n or to the power x. So this x affects this guy and also affects that guy. So I get e to the power n times x multiplied by e to the power n times. So the same approach or analogy or the same idea we use it here. So this is indices so we apply indices here. Alright, so now let's proceed. So I have e to the power 2x minus 2e to the power x plus 1 equals 0. Now this one I can still write it as e to the power or multiply by it. 2 then minus 2 e to the power x plus 1 equals 0. So now I can say that let e to the power x must be equal to let's say alpha. So I get alpha squared because e to the power x is alpha. So I get alpha squared times 2 alpha plus 1 equals 0. So now we can see that we are getting what? Quadratic with equation. Quadratic equation. And how do you solve quadratic equation? You can use the general quadratic formula, which is the almighty formula you usually get in general quadratic formula. So that's what the general quadratic formula. You can use the complete of squares. You can also use our method of factorization. That one too, we have to go down that. So now, alpha squared minus 2 alpha plus 1. So now, we want to use the almighty formula. It is accepted. Factorization to is accepted. Complete of squares to is also what? Accepted. So now, let's go to factorization. Now, factorization, I have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. That's quadratic.
to resolve it in the form that if we want to solve that, we have our A B equals one, our B B equals B equals B two, and our C B equals what? One. Right. So now this one is not the same thing as that because of the variable. So I have to give the variable as alpha so that I can compare. Because this one is alpha alpha, not x x. So I can see that A alpha squared plus B alpha plus C squared. Then I can compare. I will get my values of A, B, and C. So now, how do you solve factorization? How do you solve that equation using factorization here? So now, you have to multiply this constant by what? The coefficient of alpha squared. And the coefficient of alpha squared is what? 1. So 1 times 1, we obtain what? 1. So we have to list the factors of 1, which means that two numbers when you multiply, you get 1. So I have 1 times 1. We have negative 1 times negative 1, which I will get 1. But negative 1 times 1, you can make it 1. You don't want that. You want positive 1. So 2 numbers, when I multiply, I'll get it 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is also 1. So now let's proceed. What can we say here? Now, then we have to add or subtract. Okay, let's go for this. We have to add or subtract and see whether we get what the coefficient of, of what alpha to what negative two. We have to add or subtract and see whether we get the coefficient of alpha to negative two. So now let's add one plus one is two. This one is negative two, so we don't want that. One minus one is zero. We still don't want that. All right. Let's try our next one, which is negative 1 plus negative 2. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Let's subtract and see. Again, negative 1 minus negative 1. This one keeps at 0 because this one forms plus. So we can't see that. So I get 0. So then that means you are interested in this guy. So I have to get alpha squared. Then I'll get minus alpha because of this. Then minus, so I get plus, minus what? Alpha, then plus 1 equals 0. So now let's see. Alpha squared minus alpha minus alpha plus 1 equals 0. We have four terms. We can introduce a bracket here. So alpha squared minus alpha, then minus alpha plus 1 equals 0. So now we factorize alpha out. Then we get alpha minus 1. Then here we factorize. Uh, okay, let's factorize minus 1. So I get alpha minus 1. Or better still, you can bring here plus, then here is negative already. That's what I did here. So that you factorize what's negative 1 out. Uh, so always take note of that. You can do it like this. Uh, you can do it like this. Then here, when you reach here, you factorize your negative 1 out. If you factorize negative 1 out, negative 1 times negative you obtain what? Positive. Then negative 1 times negative. You get what? Positive. So now here, which must be equal to 0. We can see that they have the same what? Bracket. So now we take one of these brackets, which is alpha minus 1. Then here we have what? Alpha minus 1, which must be equal to what? 0. Alright, so let's proceed. So let's proceed now. Alpha minus one, alpha minus one. You can see that they are what repeated bits or equal bits, right? So it's the same thing as alpha minus one squared, which must be equal to zero. They are multiplying. They have the same base. So what do we do? We add what the exponent. So I get alpha minus one squared. Then now, how do we go about this? We take the square root on what these sides. So I get alpha minus one squared equals square root of zero. Alpha minus one equals square root of zero is also what? zero. So now we do alpha equals what? Zero plus one. Then alpha is equal to what? One. But now what are you looking for? Is it solve the equation? Which means that you are looking for x not alpha. So now then you have to write but u to the power x is equal to alpha. Then what is alpha? Alpha is now what? One. Right. 
to how can we get rid of this x or how can we get the x? Then, since this x is an exponent, we have to use the length. Take note of that. We have to use the length. Use log. Make sure that your log is in mean speed and not the speed the same thing as length. Length is always in mean speed, right? Uh -huh. So uh, don't forget log in mean speed. This time around, we want length. We want to use length. We are university students. We want to use length. So now we take length. Take length on both sides. Take length on both sides. So now length the power x equals len 1. Now, this guy drops, which means we are using the same thing as the log properties or the log laws, the logarithm laws. So, this one drops, so I get x len p equals len 1. And you can punch, what is len 1? Len 1 gives us zero. So, now, len p, what is len p? Len p is the same thing as len p is and what is log 10 base 10? Log 10 base 10 is the same thing as log 1. Now, log 1 base 10 is the same thing as 0. So don't forget the same idea. So I get x times 1, which must be equal to 0. x times 1 is 1, which is equal to 0. So therefore, the value of x is what? 0. The value of x is 0, which is very, very simple, interesting, and trivial. As well. All right, let's move on to our last question. Question 2C. Question 2C. Take notes and watch it very, very carefully. You get the understanding. Question 2C. Proceed. All right, question 2C. Find the derivative of h of x equals 3 to the power x all over 3 to the power x plus 2. What an interesting question, but it's very, very simple, very, very interesting, and very, very trivial as well. Very, very simple. So now, it's many, there are many, many, many solutions. So kindly watch carefully, because I'll be cleaning it on my board and very, very small. So kindly watch it carefully. Pay rapt attention to what I'll be doing here. So each of x equals 3 to the power x, all over 3 to the power x plus 2. We have to find for the derivative, which means we have to calculate for the first derivative, which means h1 or h prime of x must be equal to now. This one is quotient rule, quotient rule, quotient rule because they are divided. So this one will be my g and this one will be my k. Then now, how do we solve differentiation using what the quotient? Don't forget that we hold what k constant, which means k, then differentiate g with respect to x minus we hold g constant, then differentiate k with respect to x, then we divide it by its k squared. So now don't forget h prime of x is equal to h prime of I hold k constant, then I differentiate g with respect to x minus I hold g constant, then I differentiate k with respect to x divided by what? k squared. Most students make mistakes with this quotient rule, which means the student will hold k constant, then we differentiate k with respect to what? x, then minus the whole thing. We mess up the whole thing here. We mess up the whole thing here. So now here, it's the same thing as k is u over what? x minus u to k over x divided by k squared. Then we can use this one to use the same thing as that. So k is constant. You hold it constant. You won't touch it. You won't touch it. Meaning, you write the same function here. With respect to x minus, you hold this time around, you will not touch it. You hold it constant, then you differentiate k with respect to x, then divide it by what? k 
always square. So now let's proceed and see how best we can solve this diagram. So now, first of all, we said that our g was the a to the power of x, right? Now, how do we differentiate g with respect to x in this? So I want to find o. g over what? The x. And g over the x is the same thing as what? g times, right? So don't forget. Fine. So now, I want to find g prime. We want to find g prime. First of all, what do we have to do? First of all, first of all, my g must be equal to a to the power x. Now, I want to differentiate g with respect to x and see where this x is. Very, very stubborn x. x will be in two. So what do we have to do? We have to take plane of both sides so that this x will will chop down and we get the x. So now, we take plane, take plane of both sides, take plane of both sides, so I get ln g, which must be equal to ln 3 to the power of x. So now I get ln g, which must be equal to joule. So I get x ln 3. X ln 3. Now, ln g, we have to differentiate ln g, which means we want what? g prime. We want g prime with respect to what? x. Now, don't forget, implicit differentiation. Differentiate y. If you differentiate y, you get what? Um, let's see if I have 3y. I want to differentiate 3y. 3y, now 3 is constant. So if you differentiate y, you get what? 1. But this time around, this what? Implicit. So I get what? y over what? x, which is 3. 3 times 1 is the same thing as 3 times what? y prime. So now here, don't forget, we are differentiating what? This u with respect to x again. So remember the what? Implicit differentiation. So now here, ln u, how do we differentiate ln functions? How do we differentiate ln functions? Watch here. If I have ln 3x plus 2, if I want to differentiate this one, it will be 1 over the function which is, or the expression which is inside. 1 over 3x plus 2, then times the derivative of that. How do we differentiate 3x plus 2? Now, to differentiate 3x plus 2, if you differentiate 3x, you get what? 3. Then, and if you differentiate the constant, it is what? 0. So now I have 1 over 3x plus 2 times 3. Then I get what? This over 1. So I get 3 over 3x plus 2. So this is how to differentiate length. Function. Always you want to differentiate the length function. You take one over the expression which is inside, then times the derivative of what is inside there. So now let's proceed. So now I have ln g. So to differentiate ln g, I'll get what? 1 over g times my g. I have to differentiate my g. Which my g, if I differentiate, I get 1 times g prime. Remember, implicit differentiation. So times my g prime. So here I get 1 over g times my root. Which must be equal to. Now let's see. x length 3. Now they are differentiating it. So don't forget. They are differentiating g, which is my 2x. So now this length 3 is what? It's a constant. Or, or you can use what product b, which means that x is multiplying what? Length 3, right? And product b states that what? U dvin over dx plus u dg over dx. So now, which means that if this one is my u, this one is my what? U. So my u is what? x times my v. If I want to differentiate v with respect to x, now what did I tell you? I said if you don't see x beside any expression or any function, then that that function or expression, sorry, that expression is constant. So now ln 3, then that means ln 3 is constant. And if you differentiate a constant, you get 0. 
10 plus 19. What is it? It is many modes. Many times my differential of V is that it's X. Differentiate now this one is X. Differentiate the power is one. So it comes down. So I get one. So X times zero is zero plus 23 times one. It is zero plus 23. So zero plus 23. It is zero plus 23. So now that's how to differentiate. So using the product. Very, very simple. So now I get what? Differentiate x length and you get what length three. Let's proceed. So what I was saying that the question is simple. It's plain simple. It's plain simple. So you can really watch it very carefully. Now we want to show prime because we want the differential of v with respect to its x, which is true prime. So now what do we do? What do we do? We have to what, multiply both sides by what the else which is true. Remember, this one is over 1, over 1. And how many terms are here? 1 and 2. Remember, this one is multiplied. So I multiply v times my 1 over v times my v prime equals v times my uh, this guy cancels. So I get 1 times v prime. I will put v prime equals v times many 3. Now, remember, v prime is the same thing as what? Gg over gg. So watch it very, very carefully. Watch it very, very carefully. Carefully. All right. So three to the power x. That's an exponential function, right? So let's proceed. So we have therefore the v over the x equals three to the power x ln three ln three. So now we have v prime. Our u prime is available. Now it's left with our v prime. Our v prime, then we substitute it inside what the h prime of x, then you get our derivative. So now let's watch. So now let's see how do you differentiate v? So v prime, so v equals what 3 to the power x plus 2. So now you can pause the video and try again. So now let's see. Sheet. This x 
this, which is x to x, you have 1 over y times y equals ln 3. Then the ratio of this x, which is x to x, I just want to be 1 over y times y prime equals to I think x to the 3. Then what do you have to do? You have to multiply this side by y equals to what was y prime. So here by y equals to y. This one cancels like this y prime equals y ln 3. Then what is y? y is in this one. So I get y prime equals to 3 to the power x ln 3. So we have the same thing here. So now ln prime equals you get 3 to the power x ln 3. So as the differential of 2 with respect to x will be the same. So my ln prime equals 3 to the power x ln 3. Plus zero is the same as that. Same as that. All right. So which is very very simple and trivial as well. So now we are coming to substitute the value of u prime, the value of v prime, the value of v and e inside the h prime of x to get our derivative. So let's watch. So let's go. Our h prime of x. What is V? V is 3x plus 2. Then times our u prime. Our u prime is 3 to the power x ln 3. Then minus our u. Our u is what? 3x. Don't forget our u is 3x. Then times our v prime. Our v prime is what? 3 to the power x ln 3. Then divide it by. V squared, so V is what? 3 to the power x plus V all squared, all squared. So now, this is the substitution. The substitution V is 3x plus 2, which is that, times our U prime, 3 to the power x and 3 minus our U, which is 3 to the power x, then times our V prime. V prime is 3 to the power x and 3 divided by V squared, which is 3 to the power x plus squared. So now, let me write it well so that you see what is going on because I'm seeing something. So now, h prime of x equals 3 to the power x plus 2, then 3 to the power x plus 3 minus So now here, what can we do? I can factorize 3 to the power x ln 3 out. You can see, I can factorize that one out. So I get what? 3 to the power x ln 3. Then it's left with what? I'll get 3 to the power x plus 2. Then minus, minus 3 to the power of x. So as you what? 3 to the power x ln 3. 3 to the power x ln 3. Remember, this negative is affecting that. So, you can factorize this guy out. So, 3 to the power x ln 3. So, we have it as that. So, if you multiply 3 by that, you have to still get the distributive property there. Right. 3x ln 3 times that. We have it here. Then, minus this one times that. Very, very simple and trivial as well, right? So, we can even take note of that. So, now let's see. So, now divided by what? 3 to the power x plus 2 all squared. So, I get 3 to the power x plus 3. Then, now this guy cancels that. So, I get what? Minus 2, right? So, all divided by 3 to the power x plus 2 all what? Now, this one I can also write it as what? 2 times 3 to the power x, then minus then what? 3, all over what? 3 to the power x plus 2, all squared, which is the same thing as h prime 
of what? X. Raised to the power of X. So I have what? 2, 3 to the power X, or 2 times 3 to the power X, times then 3, or divided by 3 to the power X, plus 2, or square. So that's the H prime. So therefore, H prime of X is that. H prime of X is that. Thank you for subscribing.